Christ, you've already stepped from darkness to light. The light is in this vessel. The light that's going to take you to glory is already in your heart. You've just got to realize it. And this is why you run your race and you don't do it with stops and starts. No, it's time that we go full on, says Hebrews 6. It says we don't stop the finger painting. Let's go on to the real picture that God wants of our lives. There's a purpose God wants for you. It's not that you go out and do something. It's that you be it. It's that you become more and more like him. We find in the word that the Adam generation is the generation of man, where the seventh from Adam is Enoch. He walked with God and he, he, did, he never tasted death, which is a picture of the final, final generation that will walk on the earth. Now, if we look at the four generations of man, you have the Adam generation, then you have um, the generation of Noah, the generation of Abraham, and the generation of Christ. Now, the generation of Abraham was in two seed lines, a natural seed line and the spiritual seed line. And Christ came in the spiritual seed line and he birthed the final generation. But the seed line generation of Abraham was they became the final wicked generation dealing with the four days of death where humanity was asleep and Jesus came and brought in the morning. So the wicked generation was the ones that killed the Christ. But in killing the Christ, it birthed the chosen generation. But within this chosen generation, it's like you have to understand these things in the spirit. Day is um, a cycle of time, which has an evening and a morning and a day. And within the cycle of time, you have generational cycles. And in generational cycles, you have your little life cycle. But unless you step into God's purpose, <laughs> you're just existing. So this is the same in the generations. Now, in this final generation, there is a growing seven church ages, seven church generations. That is why we have in the book of Revelation the letters to the generations. But they are for all churches of all times, but they are also a um, growing of revelation. It's also a growing of revelation of who God is, what he doesn't want, what he wants, and how the kingdom is going to finally just take over the earth. So this final, final generation, <laughs> David prophesied about it in Psalm 102. And I'm going to read out of the Amplified Bible. He says, my days are like an evening shadow that lengthens and vanishes with the sun. And as for me, I wither away like grass. He's talking about his little life cycle. But you, Lord, are enthroned forever. Come on, he's the beginning and the end. He does not have a beginning and the end. He is the point which everything focuses around. Ruling eternity as sovereign. And then the fame and glory of your name endures to all generations. You will arise and have compassion on Zion. Zion is the church, the world without end. For it is time to be gracious and show favor to her. Yes, the appointed time, the moment designated has come. Oh, my word, the moment designated has come. He says, there remains a rest. Today, if you hear his voice, that today is that moment in time when you hear his voice, you step into the eternal purposes of God. For your servant must find pleasure in the stones of her ruins and feel pity for her dust. So the nations will fear the name of the Lord and all the kings of the earth will recognize your glory. For the Lord has built up Zion. He has appointed his glory and his brilliance. He has regarded the prayer of the destitute and has despised their prayer. Let this be recorded for a generation to come. That a people that yet to be created will praise God. <laughs> this is a twofold prophecy 
on the Christ generation and the final generation. A generation yet to come. You have to read the Spirit like this. For he looked down from the height of his sanctuary from heaven. The Lord gazed on the earth to hear the sighing of the prisoner, to set free those who were doomed to death, that the people may declare the name of the Lord in Zion and his praise in Jerusalem. He canceled our appointment with death. One scripture. I need to read this. Why didn't I read this? I, I get too carried away with everything. Oh, I love the word. I don't want anything but the word. Could it be any clearer? Our old way of life was nailed to the cross with Christ, a decisive end to the sin-miserable life. No longer at sin's beck and call. What we believe is this. If we get included in Christ's sin-conquering death, we also get included in the life-saving resurrection. We know that when Jesus was raised from the dead, it was a signal of the end of death as the end. He died for our setting free of our sins and he was raised for our justification to life. Never again will death have the last word. When Jesus died, he took sin down with him, but alive, he brings God to us. 